Welcome to Next 2019 in Chicago. I'm Jason Bellamy. We have an amazing couple days of programming lined up. And one of the sessions being led by the woman to my left, which is Carolyn McManus. Carolyn, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. So you are leading a session that's related to stress and pain. So first, at just a very basic level, uh, what's the effect of stress on pain? Well, I think most clinicians recognize that stress can amplify pain. And when you think of factors that can impact our, our patients' behaviors, such as when they're caught in catastrophic thinking, maybe they have PTSD, uh, they have a history of childhood trauma, all of those would have a stress element to them and can contribute to a patient's pain experience. So if clinicians understand this, and I agree, I think that they do, what does your session go into then? What do clinicians need to better maybe appreciate? Well, I'm t thrilled to be here and be sharing the podium with Etienne Vincent Presso, who is a leading researcher examining the effects of pain on the brain. And what his research is suggesting that the way the brain changes with chronic pain uh, parallels the way the brain changes with chronic stress. Mm -hmm. So what he's suggesting is that the experience of, of chronic pain is experienced as a chronic stressor and the maladaptive changes that are driven by stress hormones contribute to the changes we see in patients' brains who have chronic pain conditions. And so then that would suggest that physical therapists need to consider stress management strategies for helping their patients with chronic pain. And then he'll, he's going to be presenting on this, on his research. And then I'm going to be presenting on mindfulness-based strategies that give patients the skills to self-regulate their pain conditions. And so I'm not going to expect you to recite your full lecture, but like, what are some of those? So when, when it time, gets time to be in front of the consumer, to be able to express to them that stress and pain are related, what are some of those mindfulness uh, tips and tricks that they can put into play? Well, probably uh, one of the first ones is just dia is diaphragmatic breathing. You know, when you breathe, you breathe in the present moment. So when you bring your attention to your breath, your mind rests in the here and now. And we know that diaphragmatic breathing can help lead toward a, a calming of the nervous system. The other uh, element of mindful awareness, mindful awareness is both about resting in the present moment, but also cultivating uh, attitudes that are, I think, therapeutic. And one of those attitudes is kindness and a basic friendliness and warm-heartedness to your experience. And I find it extremely valuable to coach patients to pay attention to themselves as they would a good friend. You know, so many people are hard on themselves, and here they are struggling with a complex medical problem, and then they're adding to their suffering with their self-criticism and self-judgment. So mindful awareness is a, is a training to help people abide in the present moment, uh, allowing for their experience without struggling or judging it, and all in an atmosphere of friendliness and kindness. And I think that attitude of not struggling, not judging is also huge because for a lot of patients, they'll experience the pain and then they struggle. And sometimes that struggle will amplify their pain and also be an obstacle to insight that could lead them to new behaviors. So with mindful awareness training, you're, you're coaching people and cultivating a steadiness of mind that enables them to more calmly observe what's happening and then out of that calm observation make skillful choices. So I would suggest diaphragmatic breathing, uh, coaching people that, hey, that's gonna bring you into the present moment. And that's key because a lot of our patients are worried about the future. What's gonna happen next? And they can get very escalated in their distress just with all of those fearful thoughts about tomorrow. I like to tell patients to plan for tomorrow, but don't live there, to come back to your breath, to think about what kind of skillful choices can you make today? to pay attention to yourself with kindness and friendliness, and to begin to cultivate this very steady mind that can observe what's arising, even when it's unpleasant or unwanted. You can calmly notice pain as sensation. As a matter of fact, I tell patients to drop the word pain from their vocabulary altogether, because pain is an alarming term, and it's more likely to trigger them in a more stress, uh, stress direction, whereas neutral, it, I mean, um, Sensation is a more neutral term, and they can adopt a more calming relationship to their pain rather than an alarming one. How, I mean, it's different for each person, right? Yes. Based yeah. on their pain, all that sort of stuff. But 
that sort of mindset transition from pain to sensation even, from sort of feeling that it's controlling them to them having a sense of control, how quickly can that change happen in your experience? Well, you know, in my practice, I specifically uh, specialize in this approach, and I work with people for anywhere from two to six one-hour training sessions, and very often in just a couple of weeks, people can begin to change their attitude. I think it makes common sense, and when you begin with some pain education where you explain to patients the role of their nervous system in generating the experience of pain, I often tell, hope, tell people, you know, I want to help you have the healthiest nervous system as well as the healthiest tissue and I often see people who've had pain for six months six years and they're very eager to to try something new and um, so even within a couple of weeks people can start to make those changes so you clearly love what you do uh, before we started recording here we talked about how you got involved in physical therapy in the first place just t share with that story for, for with me real quick Sure. Well, I was in a ski accident um, in my senior year of undergraduate school, and I was treated by the physical therapists at the University of Massachusetts, and they were just such fantastic people. I thought, wow, if I have to work for the rest of my life, I want to work with people like this. And they were huge motivators to me, and that's why I'm here and uh, in the profession and sharing my expertise here at uh, Next. Well, thanks for being one of the amazing people in this profession. She's Carolyn McManus. I'm Jason Bellamy. We'll have more updates for you like this from Next 2019, and I'll catch you later.